how you doing guys just had kind of a uh, rough meditation session and recently I decided that I wanted to talk about some of the different goals and objectives and possible things to learn from doing meditation because the last time I made a video I realized it was really kind of interesting to see my progress documented so um, you know just as a matter of inspiration I figured I'd occasionally do some of these videos to identify some of these different things in the last session I just did uh, for whatever reason I'm ridiculously inspired this summer to think about a lot of different things and a lot of different ideas and it seems like I'm almost more inspired by ideas right now than I am during the uh, semesters uh, during which I'm taking courses, teaching courses, and doing uh, more hands-on research. And for whatever reason, my mind is extremely busy and chaotic, and it's only for whatever reason during this last session, uh, it was very, very difficult to get my mind to stop moving, to stop working. Which, occasionally, or usually, when that happens, you have a very difficult time, or I have a very difficult time finding the center. And over time, when you, when you, again, or I haven't said this yet today, but basically, it's very difficult to put words to any of this stuff. And I think that that's why there's a certain ambiguity to a lot of the literature that's been written on meditation, which is one of the things I'd like to avoid whenever I talk about it. And there's something, I guess I'll call it the center, which is like you're trying to lock your focus onto this one particular thing. And the way meditation is usually described is in terms of uh, focus, or not focusing your mind, but basically not blocking out thoughts. It's almost like whenever it was meditation was described to me originally, the goal was to not think about other things. But when you really learn how to focus, it's not about avoiding thoughts, it's not about avoiding anything. It's about finding the this indescribable place. Uh, the center where you're where you're focused, and the stronger your meditation practice is, the stronger that center becomes, and the more clear it becomes, the more elucidated it becomes, and um, the more identifiable. Almost like when you really when you really have a stronghold on it, it's like a light switch. It's that powerful. In other words, your mind is inevitably going to wander at times, but when you have that center accessible it's like a light switch you can lock right into it when you find it when you observe or notice that your mind is wandering you can bring yourself back like like that and um, to find that is, is it's a really powerful and interesting thing because when you have a high accessibility to it at any given time during the day at least during the time periods where it is accessible you can revert back to that center, lock yourself right in, and no matter what's happening around you, you have that that strong foundation to to step back into. Um, now, what I was going to get at uh, when I first started talking about my last, uh, my most well, the meditation session that I just did, is that it was very difficult. Even though I kind of had that center accessible, my mind kept moving around. And after about 20 minutes, I started to um, remain focused. Uh, because, as I said, as I sort of described, being focused wasn't the problem. Um, it was, I was able to be focused, but I was, my mind was wandering. And, again, if you haven't done this type of... If you haven't done had a lot of experience with meditation, like, that can be a difficult thing to understand. Usually... Um, those things don't go together. Usually they're not together. Um, but towards the end of my session, 
um, because in the middle it seemed like I was able to find that uh, that center and stay and stay with it. But at the end, um, it was I had completely lost it again, and my mind would not keep would not uh, stay at that center, and it kept wandering, and I felt this sort of anxiety build up inside me, and I think that as you develop a greater sense of mindfulness, a greater sense of, you know, where in your body you're feeling uh, physical sensations that cause discomfort, you eventually are able to observe those things in an objective way. And so this is the point of the video. Um, when you, one of the goals, of the primary goals of meditation is observing these physical sensations and not judging them because typically we classify our sensations physical sensations uh, according to a within a bipolar uh, classification system it's either good or it's bad and the goal at least of vipassana is to objectify physical sensations to remove the uh, the judgment from these physical sensations um, and observe them without reacting to them and observe the fact that no matter what the sensation is whether it you know may be characterized ordinarily as, as painful or pleasurable all of these things have the same characteristic of um, changing over time and the funny thing or I guess the progress uh, that I've observed and kind of re-experienced during this past session is that that anxiety when you when I'm observing it is kind of charming because it feels like a great big um, I don't know ball of energy expanding inside of me and as I observe that uh, and know that it's temporary there's something about it that's charming, and that's all I can say.